Sign. Copyright 2004 through 2022 by Thomas E. Wounded Crow Publishing. All rights reserved. Friday afternoon, John left the office and started down the crowded city street where he trumpled the littered sidewalks with his urban neighbors. The orangish rays of the setting sun reflected off suspended glass, cutting shadows through alleyways. Making his way toward the subway, he noticed a slender and somewhat pale woman standing in the doorway of an old building. The abandoned theater was to be torn down, and in its place, another parking garage would soon be erected. He wondered what she was doing there, if she were homeless or just waiting for someone. Dressed plainly in a grayish-blue dress that looked somewhat worse for wear, she wore a sign around her neck that said, Ask. John looked back to the street and continued walking, wondering what the sign had meant. Ask what? he thought. Stopping somewhat abruptly in mid-stride, he turned to glance back at the doorway. The woman, who had been facing the other way when he passed her, was now facing him again, and the sign now read, Anything. Curious, John went up to her. Are you waiting for someone? he asked. I was, but not now. Do you need anything? You are very kind to ask, but no. Thank you. John looked at her perplexed, and didn't know if she was indeed all right, or just too proud to ask for handouts. The sign now read, Help. Would you like to get a cup of coffee or something? That would be very nice, thank you, she said, and smiled politely. They made their way across the crowded street, and entered one of the many restaurants that lined the downtown area. After being seated, they received their beverages and menus. He read through the items, not really focusing on the menu at all, but on the woman's sign that seemed to change every few moments. It didn't appear to be an electronic sign, but a plain white, almost cardboard-looking sign, or even perhaps a polymer plastic. He just couldn't seem to comprehend how it was functioning. It now read, You. I'm sorry if I'm being forward, but why? It helps people convey their thoughts and feelings she said, before he finished his sentence. She smiled elegantly and took another sip of her tea. This woman wore no makeup, but had an inner beauty that penetrated through her. It appeared to John that she had an almost elegant or regal nature in which she was above any type of pettiness or maliciousness. The waitress came to the table and asked if they were ready to order. John looked at the woman and asked her what she wanted. I'm fine, thank you, but you should get something. John looked at the waitress and told her they would wait for now. You are not hungry? I'd be happy to get the bill if you would allow me. No, really, I am fine. There are so many others who would benefit from your generosity. Don't waste it on me. There are so many in the city who need help, especially today with the economy being as it is, John said. Many times he had passed people in the streets and in the alleyways, but he didn't know how just one person could help them. He would stop from time to time and give a few dollars here and there, but it seemed so trivial. He had wished he had been wealthy, and maybe he could have made some difference. But it all seemed so futile. What could he do? Ask. The sign had changed back again. John thought that maybe it just cycled through a list of words, It was one of those new orb displays that he had read about. I'm sorry, I'm John, he said, and extended his hand. Hello, John, I'm Mary. She reached out and shook his hand. Her hand was soft and warm, and he felt a strangeness through his body as he pulled back his own hand. It was a feeling of warmth and safeness, like when he was a boy and his mother would hold him at night after a bad dream. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mary, he smiled. His eye caught the news broadcast playing on a television at the corner of the restaurant, and his smile quickly turned to a frown. The newscast was reporting on the war. I wish they could find peace in their country, he said. I cry for the innocence of the children, whose suffering will linger for decades to come. They will never stop fighting their wars. How could anyone stop them? John thought. The sign had now changed to one. One what? John wondered. Person, 
The sign changed again. John sat back against the booth. Do you think that anyone can stop the fighting? The wars will stop when one person decides to stop them. One person cannot stop a war. Who could be that person? John asked. It took only one person to initiate the war, so it will take only one person to stop the war. People can be very powerful when it concerns their future. Maybe you're right, but only heaven knows, John replied. And they aren't saying anything, he thought. What we really need is a miracle. There haven't been any miracles in, oh, I don't know how long. When was the last miracle? He drank from his coffee cup and noticed the sign now read, Today. He remembered the question he just thought and had begun to understand the sign. Are you an angel? He thought. The sign changed to, No. Why are you talking with me? Help, the sign said. Help who? You, the sign changed again. Do I need help? John asked. Everyone needs help and guidance. People need to understand that it is there for them whenever they need it. I don't understand what it is I am supposed to do with my life. It feels as if I'm just going through the motions of breathing, but not taking in any air. It is in these types of questions that prove you are far beyond your lung capacity. Your life is meaningful only when it has changed the life of another. And you have changed so many lives, John. He stared at her and thought maybe she had the wrong person. I haven't changed anyone's life. What have I ever done that was worthy of such praise? Mary's sign began to darken, and small colored dots started to form images of him handing out money to the homeless. The dots faded and came back again to form an image of him pulling back a young boy from falling off the curb into speeding traffic. The images began to display faster and faster, each time giving a glimpse into a good deed he had performed. Okay, I hadn't realized all that I had done, but it still doesn't seem like enough. Mary smiled and stood up. I must be going, John. It has been nice talking with you. John stood up, placed some money on the table, and followed her out of the restaurant. They walked silently in the darkness. Most of the city had cleared, and only scattered people hurried through the streets to catch the later trains. They walked to the doorway of the old theater, where he first saw her, and Mary stopped. You will be all right then, he asked. I will, and you? I feel a great deal better about so many things. Thank you for talking with me. You have done enough, John, if when you lay down at night to sleep, you dream of this moment. Will I see you again? John asked. When you are finished, you will see me again. Good night, John. Good night, he said, and began to walk to the subway. I wonder if that was... He turned quickly to look back at the sign, but she was gone. He looked across the city streets, turning in every direction, but she was nowhere to be seen. Saddened, he started to walk when he stumbled over a man that had been lying in the doorway. I'm so sorry, I didn't see you, John said apologetically. Have fifty cent for a coffee? John reached into his pocket, took out the remaining money, and handed it to the man. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Sleep well, he smiled and continued on his way home. I hope you enjoyed this multimedia presentation of the short story titled Sign by Thomas E. To read more about Thomas's books and latest work, visit WoundedCrowPublishing.com. You will also find interviews, podcasts, and YouTube videos. In the meantime, look for more content coming to this channel, because though wounded, this crow can really fly.